from the University of Ghana. He's an economist. D Dr. Sumi, good afternoon and welcome. So, uh, I mean, this latest development regarding uh, uh, our plans or our program to look forward to the release of the third round of the IMF, the MOU that has been signed between Ghana and the Official Creditor Committee, this should come as a good news to handlers of our economy, isn't it? Thank you, for having me. Uh, I think it's definitely positive news. It moves us closer to um, what we needed. I think that was the last uh, remaining requirement before the second, the staff level agreement on the second review goes to the IMF. So I think this is, is positive news. The other thing, I think, in addition to you know, selling, getting the Yes, uh, do, 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 Doctor, sorry, sorry for my bargaining, but it, uh, we can hardly hear you. If you can pick up your voice uh, kindly for me. Is it any better? Yes, it's better now. Thank you so much. All right. So I was saying that it is very positive news for, for the economy because it means that the last remaining requirement before the staff level agreement that was reached for the second review can go to the IMF board, we should trigger the 360 million release. But it's also positive news because uh, the bilateral agreement with the bilateral uh, partners to help us um, restore or restart some of the road projects that have been stalled because of the negotiations, the discussions. You notice that since we went into the debt restructuring, a lot of road projects that are funded by some of these bilateral partners have been put on hold. And that, so you see a lot of road projects around the country that have stalled. So it's the expectation that once we're able to reach an agreement on this component of the debt restructuring, it should help resumption of those projects one way or the other. So overall, it's positive news for the Ghana economy. What about, I mean, the, the, the assumption is that with the release of the third tranche of the IMF money, 300 and 60 million US dollars. It may also help in stabilizing the, the, the city. Is there any truth in this optimism that, you know, handlers of the economy seem to have with the incoming funds from the IMF? Yes, I think, I mean, any addition to the additional source of uh, inflow is going to be helpful for the economy. But I think the 360 million in and on itself will probably not make a significant dent. I think the other thing we have to understand is that we have some reserve requirements as part of a program target. And to some extent, because of those requirements, the Bank of Ghana doesn't really have the free hand to uh, spend or to use the dollar reserves to support the currency in the currency market as it probably would have without the, those requirements. So, but I think the whole... It's not just the 360 million, but also once it's as far as Ghana is making significant progress, that should also help with uh, other sources of funding that have been pending. Don't forget, uh, last month, sometime last month, when the finance minister spoke, he says we are expecting up to 2.3 billion uh, before the end of the year. All of those, in some ways, are tied to how much we progress on the IM, under the IMF program. So. This release, I mean, this news and the fact that there's 360 million will come, all of them go a long way to help. I don't think the 360 million in itself is what will make the significant change in terms of uh, the trend of the city. We, 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 we were looking forward to some sort of debt cancellation or debt forgiveness. We didn't get. I mean, what could possibly explain the stance taken by the creditor committees? Yeah, I, this is purely speculation. I mean, it's hard to understand. I think it would have been great if we got some debt, some part of the debt completely forgiven. That, that has not been the case. That appears not to be the case. But I think, you know, it gives us, we still have some room. We still have, it gives us some room. But this is only hazarding, I guess. I think if I was part of the negotiation on the other side, right, and I see how... The government of Ghana is still living its life as if, you know, we are not in any extraordinary time and we are not a country in it. Perhaps 
I will take a harder line in terms of giving debt forgiveness. Mm. And I think the other thing that it means is that based on the comparability principle, it means that we may not get much from the commercial partners. Because if you don't get substantial debt forgiveness from the bilateral, you shouldn't expect that you get those also from the bilateral partners. So that aspect is not so pleasant. Right. And then the, the other issue is about the euro bond and how we are also hoping to restructure it. We are talking about over $16 billion, far bigger than the official creditor committees. Exactly. So I think when I'm talking about commercial partners, that's exactly what I was referring to. Mm. Because part of the deal we get from the... It has to be comparable to the deal we get from the bilateral partners. So if you don't get substance, if you don't get debt forgiveness from the bilateral partners, we are unlikely to get that from the Eurobond holders. That's mm. our commercial partners. So I think that is where... You know, the overall news, good news, but I think some of the details are not present at all. Yeah, so, Doctor, b before I let you go, I mean, this may come as a temporary relief, but ultimately, we have simply pushed the payment of our debt uh, to tomorrow, if you like, and with some, with some we'll start paying from uh, 2026, 2028. What must we do from now to when we start paying our debt to ensure that we are in a state where we'll be capable of doing so? such that the current situation we found ourselves in will be able to ride over? Well, first thing, we have to grow the economy. I think, you know, the, the economy is not growing. And generally, so, so let, me, let me step back. Mm. Ultimately, we have to find means to collect the, you know, increase our revenue collection. And also the government has to you know, look at its own finances. But when it comes to the revenue generation, it's much easier for government to collect additional revenue when the economy is growing than when it is not. Right. In the last three years or so, the economy has not been going very well. So any attempt to uh, you know, bring new taxes will be a problem. But ultimately, we know we are going to have to pay at it. And that comes from collecting revenue. Of course, to, in order not to keep adding to the state of the, the government of South that is current spending. But... I think, you know, um, putting in longer term measures to ensure that the economy is growing is extremely important. And then also, government say something about this expenditure. We, we've been talking about the size of our government. Mm. And, you know, all the effects that we give our government. In the U.S., uh, while the economy goes into the kind of difficulties we are in, those are the times for us to cut those specs. It appears that none of that has happened. So, I think, so... Making sure that we streamline our government expenditures and then also ensuring that the economy is growing, those will be two critical measures that will help us, that will make it easier on us to pay those debts when they call you. And your, and, and your comments doesn't give me so much comfort, especially when we look at the current state of affairs. Does this in any way suggest that perhaps we may be back in this same situation in the next few years if we don't put our, 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 our house in order? Absolutely. You know, the, the research shows us that when countries default, they are more likely to default again. When countries go through debt restructuring, it increases the likelihood that they will do another debt restructuring. And I think unless we take drastic measures, and, you know, apart from the IMF program, and even with the IMF program, I don't see too much the kind of drastic measures we need being taken. Mm. So, yes, but you cannot underestimate how much this relief gives us because these are ones that have fallen due. Right. When, even though it seems like you've kicked the can down the line further up, you, you, know, you cannot underestimate the additional time you need to make adjustments, to grow your economy, and to raise new funds. Mm. So it does something for us, even though some form of debt forgiveness would have been much better for us. But... It wasn't to be. So we shouldn't get into the mode that, oh, it is far down the line, so we are going to get back to life as usual. If you do, that time will arise and we will not be in a position to repay the debt. And of course, and that brings me to my next and final question about the fact that we are almost about entering into the electioneering campaign where promises will be made. Already, assurance has been given that all sort projects uh, will restart. Contractors will go back to site because we have some window of opportunity. Even though the finance minister has given indication that he will stay within budgetary limits, those remains worse. In terms of actualizing those words, we are yet to see. 
we have so much examples to give, especially when we are in an election year. The precarious situation of our economy makes it very important and stay within limits. But do you trust the politician to do so? Not at all. I don't. You see, so as a, as a research scientist, I, I, I know the government has made promises and the, the powers that we have made all the promises. But, you know, as a researcher, I cannot throw away so many years of evidence in favor of the promise of a politician, especially when the incentive to overspend your election period is so great. Right. So, in some sense, there could be a possibility that we can spend without and still be within target. Don't forget that the domestic debt exchange itself has brought us some savings. And even this debt restriction that we are doing, even though we haven't gotten so much debt forgiveness, it will also bring us some savings. In the 2024 budget, I'm not so sure that the finance minister accounted for those amounts. Mm. So in principle, those savings we made from those debt forgiveness are there. And the you know, the, the, bank, the government could end up spending those, and those will end up be our uh, extra government expenditures. But what we need is to use those savings wisely. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Patrick Assuming.